Hi, everybody. Welcome to another what's going to be fantastic Universal Language Room. We have our fantastic host and founder, Jason Kaplan, and we have an incredible inventor who is joining us today, David Packhouse. Did I pronounce it correctly? You did. Good job. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Score one for the beginning. Um, we're going to talk about his incredible invention, his ideas, where this came from, um, spirituality and universality, all of it come together. And this is a, a different interview that we've ever had on the show. So we're super excited to be branching out a little bit. Um, and David has some incredible experience and history. So he's going to share all of that with us. So welcome again, everybody for joining us today. Jason, why don't you share a little bit about David's background and then talk about how you guys connected to begin with? Sure. Thanks, Shoshana. Thanks, David, for joining us. This is a Beta Balafia of March 17th. I think it's one of our 12th or 13th program. Um, we've had jazz musicians and spiritual leaders and teachers of Abulafia. Now we're having an inventor. This is a whole new direction for us. We're really excited to have David with us. So let me read you the bio. David Packhouse is an American entrepreneur, inventor, and musician. He's the chief executive officer and founder of Singular Sound, a company focused on making technology that empowers musicians. Um, let me skip over here. The Beat Buddy is the uh, product I'm holding right here. This is the Beat Buddy pedal. And it's received every major recognition in the musical uh, instrument industry from the industry's highest honor of best in show at the National Association of Music Merchants, the Guitar World's Platinum Award for Excellence, as well as induction to the Guitar Players Hall of Fame in 2015. You can check this all out at singularsound.com. So this is a really big honor for us to have an inventor and a, a business person inventing uh, an amazing product. Um, and so to take it up to full speed to today, uh, I found out about the Beat Buddy, I think, five or six years ago. I had the mini Beat Buddy, and then I got this product and I've been practicing and playing and it's really helped me develop as a musician so I posted one time um, about a month ago that I'm uh, I said I'm always enjoying the beat buddy and I'm practicing my permutation someone said oh I know uh, that he is in Miami and this is the inventor's name I was like oh I never actually looked that up so I reached out he said what do you think of uh, mu music and meditation and he's like sure David said great yeah let's do it so so thankful for your openness to join us and David Packhaus welcome to the program Thank you. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no, it's great. I feel like after reading that bio, we could just be like, okay, and that's good because <laughs> that's amazing. All of those things that he just shared. <laughs> well, um, thank you. Yeah, no, it's it's great. So tell us a little bit. I think we're all curious to know sort of the background, how the sausage is actually made, if I can use that. Sure. Um, where where this idea came from, and then take us through all the way to actually production of the product and and going out to market. Right. So um, my first, so the first product I ever came up with was the Beat Buddy. That was my first, uh, inv well, I should say it was the first invention that I actually took to market. My, the, my first invention that I thought up of was when I was eight years old and I uh, designed a perpetual motion machine that I thought would solve the Earth's energy problems. Uh, <laughs> but of course, it violated the laws of physics, so didn't work out too well. But um, but ever since then, my dad was very encouraging. So he, he got me like a little... Uh, uh, like a um, notebook and he wrote on it, you know, David's invention book. And he told me to put all my inventions in there. I still have it. It's really cute. I have awesome. uh, uh, like little sneakers with like fans in them that I, you know, was so you could go flying, you know, with little propellers on the shoes. Uh, so yeah, like eight year old inventions. And, um, but uh, uh, the Beat Buddy was the first invention that I actually took all the way to market. I came up with it um, because I was, uh, for people who don't know me, there was uh, a movie called War Dogs, which was made about a, a sh small period of my life. Um, it was based on my true story, I guess you could say. And uh, the fallout from that whole thing, I was I was in uh, the arms business and, and uh, got into some legal trouble. Luckily, I didn't go to prison or anything like that, but I did get sentenced to seven months of house arrest. And while I was under house arrest, I've been playing, I've always been a singer ever since I was a little kid and I've been playing guitar since I was 15. Um, so I was playing a lot of guitar because there's not much else to do. And um, I really missed playing with the drummer because, you know, the drummer has, uh, gives the beat to the music. That's the energy of the music. And, and it's a lot more fun to play with the drummer, to play with a beat. So, but of course, no drummer is going to bring his old drum set over my house. So I bought a, uh, I bought a drum machine, you know, a little electronic device. 
And, uh, but of course it's meant to be used with your hands on the tabletop. So I would, I was making beats and playing along to, with it, but every time I wanted to go like from verse to chorus, I'd have to stop playing my guitar, press the button on the machine to change the beat and then go back to playing and just interrupted the flow of the music. And I thought, man, I really wish I had a drum machine that was inside a guitar pedal so I could control the beat hands-free, um, I could do drum fills. I could do transitions from verse to chorus, you know, accent hits, pause, unpause, all that stuff. That would be awesome to be able to have that live control of the beat, but not have to use my hands. So I could keep on playing the guitar. And I was sure at the time that someone already made something like this. So I went on the internet and looked up to see where I could buy it, but I couldn't find it anywhere. And I asked my musician friends if they'd seen anything like it. And they said, yeah, I haven't seen anything like that. But if you find it, let me know, because I want one, too. That sounds super cool. <laughs> and and like all my every musician friend I talked to about this said the same thing. And so I thought, well, if nobody's making it and everybody loves it. I might as well make it. That's and cool. so I'd never actually made an electronics product before any new product before up until this point and so i had no idea what to do um so i started googling the first step towards everything mm -hmm. and i just googled uh, electronics product development and um i found like 50 different companies that all claimed they would take your idea from uh from napkin sketch to production that was the the usual tagline in the marketing and uh, but of course i had no idea which one to use so i made them all sign a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA. Anyone who's getting into business should know about NDAs. You can Definitely. download a uh, you can download a, 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 a template online. Um, and it's a standard procedure for these kinds of things. Um, I also applied for a patent, so I was patent pending. But, um, but of course, that's no guarantee that no one will steal your idea. You should still get the NDA. And uh, I got around, out of like maybe... 30, 40 companies that I contacted, I got around like around 13, 14 actual offers, uh, quotes. Whoa, that's a lot. Those are yeah. good numbers. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I mean, uh, you know, two out of three people just ignored me, but which is kind of right. surprising considering that uh, considering that you think that they're on the internet and, and for have a reason their get to get business to, exactly but they yeah. don't even bother to respond so uh so that's why you have to contact a lot of people because most people aren't serious or they don't have time or whatever and yeah. um so i got to think around 13 quotes or so and um and they ranged all over the place i mean they were everything like this the the uh the cheapest quote was 10 times cheaper than the most expensive quote so that was it, there was an order of magnitude difference there and i wasn't sure who to go with so of course i've made the classic beginner mistake of uh going with the cheapest one first and uh, that didn't end up going too well um mm. it took about nine months of uh until i realized that this person was not gonna actually complete the project and oh didn't really know what they were doing and so i had to I look back at all the quotes I got and I realized, you know, instead of going with the cheapest one or even the most expensive one, why don't I go with the people who seem like they know what they're talking about? Yeah. And so the the people who gave me the most detailed proposal, it was like five pages long and they had a, a, a details of like different types of engineers they would need to use for the different project because I didn't know anything at the time. So, uh, so I didn't know what kind of engineers you need to build this thing. I didn't know you need a electrical engineer to design the PCB board and a mechanical engineer to design the housing and a, a software en engineer to make the software on it. And these are all things I kind of learned as I went. Yeah. Um, but they had a very detailed proposal uh, stating exactly how much time they estimated each component of the project to take. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I mean, at least they have a plan, right? <laughs> so, you know, I don't know whether they can pull it off, but at least they seem like they, they have a plan to do this. And um, I actually didn't have enough money to, uh, to uh, get them to do it. And they were around the middle of the road. They weren't even the most expensive one. They were around the middle, but I didn't even have close enough to, I had like maybe 20% of the money that they were asking for. Um, and I told them, Hey, you know, I, I don't have this money. And so they said, I was extremely lucky that I found these people because they said they were actually based in Canada, um, in Montreal. And they said, well, you know, we really want to get into the 
into the uh, uh, the consumer market. We all of our other products have been for large corporations and governments, and this is a really cool product. Uh, and our lead engineer happens to be a drummer. So <laughs> yeah, so yeah. And he says, uh, uh, the the lead engineer, I talked to him and he's like, yeah, you know, I, I have all my friends are always asking to jam with me and I don't have time to jam with them because I'm running an engineering company. <laughs> but so I know that they would love the Beat Buddy. They would love this product. And and so I so we made a deal where I gave him pretty much every penny I had to my name as a down payment. Yeah. And uh, they agreed to build me a working prototype. And the plan was that I would take that working prototype and launch a crowdfunding campaign uh, yeah. to get to get them the rest of the money. And they would hold the engineering documents as uh, collateral. So yeah. if I didn't get them the money, there was I couldn't go to manufacturing. And uh, so we did that and I launched a crowdfunding campaign. Luckily, it became a very successful crowdfunding campaign. Uh, actually, it was a, a world record at the time. Uh, we raised $350,000 in one month. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it was uh, extremely gratifying and relieving because it <laughs> meant that uh, that I was right about the people wanting this product and they were willing yeah. to put money up in advance before it even existed and on the market. Um, but that was enough money to pay them back the money they needed and to get manufacturing started. And I launched my company, Singular Sound, like it says on my shirt right here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that was the beginning. That was actually uh, just the, the crowdfunding campaign ended in February of 2014. So almost exactly oh, wow. 10 years ago. So that was the beginning of my company. And since then, we've come out with uh, several other products as... Uh, Jason and I were talking before we started this session. Uh, we came out with the world's greatest looper called the Eros Looper. It's a, a, a looper pedal that uh, the difference between the Eros Looper and other loopers like the one Jason has is that uh, the Eros has a like a full color screen on it, a touch screen. So, and you, so you could watch the waveforms being recorded across it and you could watch the, uh, the loops go. So it's much easier to know where you are in the loop it also has six parallel tracks, uh, so you could do six independent loops at the same time of different lengths, as well as unlimited overdubs on each loop. And you also have six different song parts. So each, each uh, like you could have six loops in the verse, six loops in the chorus, six loops in the bridge. And so you could have different sections of the song, and that makes it a lot more uh, um uh, flexible in what you could do live. And because there's the visual interface, you could see everything happening. It makes it much easier to loop. Um, so that was one of the, uh, that's our most recent, uh, uh, most high tech product. We also have a, a few other products uh, like the MIDI Maestro, which is a, a MIDI foot controller, uh, makes it very, e most MIDI foot controllers are very difficult to customize, which is what you need. A MIDI foot controller for people who don't know is is just a, uh, a like a foot switch kind of thing that sends out MIDI signals, which is the universal language of musical equipment. So if yes. you want to, if you have other devices that take MIDI uh, into it, you could use MIDI controllers to control those devices. So we, but until uh, the reason I came up with the MIDI Maestro is because the uh, uh, MIDI controllers tend to be very, very complicated. They're designed by by computer scientists rather than musicians. And so uh, you need to read very thick manuals to in order to figure them out. So we made one that you can just customize with the smartphone app. It's much easier to use. Amazing. Yeah. Technology for yeah. the win. Yeah. And, okay. uh, and one last product uh, that I want to talk about that we came up with. Okay, good. And because I have like a yeah. million questions, yeah. but I also want to bring yeah, Jason yeah. again. So show us sure. what you've got. So the last product I want to talk about, uh, just so people know the stuff we make, is the simplest product we make, which is the Cably. And this product is a device that keeps all your cables nice and wound. Organized. And exactly. So if you're ever doing a show and you have like a you know, 20, 30 foot cable, instead yeah. of wind, winding it on your arm and yeah. detangling it, you just wind it up like this. And My OCD boom. appreciates that. Exactly. And it keeps <laughs> it 
it keeps it all in a very compact form, protects it on uh, when you're traveling. I came up with this when I was doing a show and I had like seven different cables I had to put away and it was like taking right. me 15 minutes to untangle them and put them away. And I thought I, there had to be a better way. Right. So, so yeah, so that's the, those are our musical products. Uh, so they're yeah, all, so go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 they're all genius. And actually Thank that you. one, I was going to ask you if you were like out gardening or something and you had to like wind up the hose. So outside. it actually, you were more correct than you, than you know, it was uh, my mother was, it was a uh, love gardening and she had, one of those big garden hoses yeah. and that that is See? exactly what gave that's me right. the idea yeah. right so the two of y'all yeah. together right that's how it came exactly to be. exactly no, i thought stuff. i need something like that but way smaller and for a cable rather than a hose <laughs> that's right that was, that it must be thought, yeah. so satisfying to see the ideas that you've just like they're just like sparks in your brain right and then yeah. them come to fruition and then be successful and not just that because like the business is nice that it's successful and profitable but that all your musician fellow colleagues are getting such good use out of this. And it's been a positive disruptor in the mm -hmm. musical industry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's, it's uh, it is extremely gratifying. I think one of the yeah. coolest experiences I've had uh, while running this business was um, I'm a huge fan of Alice in Chains, the brunch band from the nineties. Yeah, yeah, and sure. uh, uh, they were one of the bands that I actually learned to play guitar of, you know, uh, learning their songs. I, I, they were one of the first songs I learned. And um, at one trade show, this guy comes up to me and he's like, Oh, you make the beat buddy. Right. And I said, yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm Mike Inez, the bass player from Alice in Chains. Oh. He's like, I just bought, I just bought one two months ago and I, I, I love it. And I've been writing all my new music using your beat buddy. And I was <gasps> like, you're writing your new music what? using my beat buddy. I learned to play guitar playing your Easy. music. <laughs> yeah. So that was super, super cool. That was very gratifying. It's that's super a good nice full guy. circle moment. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about creativity because obviously sure. you have to have that as a musician, as an inventor. But I also want to see from your perspective how if meditation comes into any of your mm -hmm. endeavors, because here at Beidou Abu Afi and Universal Language Room, Jason, come in, we talk a lot about music and meditation, how the two go hand in hand and how we use them together, you know, to center mm -hmm. ourselves for positivity and everything that mm -hmm. Jason presents to us during ULR and Beidou Abu Afi. Right, Jason? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's great. And and I think that you're seeing the amazing products that people can use now in their own home to have a full band. Um, so one thing is you can practice and then hopefully it inspires people to get together with other humans. And uh, what, the thing that I think is so unique about today's call is that we've always really focused on melody. So we've shown mm -hmm. the four notes um, and we've shown the four Hebrew letters and the permutations of Abulafia, Abulafia and how they go together. Mm -hmm. So what's really neat about today is we're talking about rhythm which we really haven't focused on. Right. And uh, when I studied with Mike Longo, who's the piano player for Dizzy Gillespie, and he, he was explaining African polyrhythms are at the heart of jazz. And I thought, oh, I never really studied rhythm that way. And so I, I think for folks at home who are saying, well, I don't play an instrument. I'm like, well, you can bang on a table. You can play one, two, three, four, five, six, and play a four beat with it. So um, for me, it's really interesting to hear from David as he's playing guitar to how he how he relates to rhythm as the universal language here you mentioned so I, mm -hmm. I would be really interested to hear more about that you know what's really interesting is that i realized through the process of creating uh the beat buddy in, in particular at first was how little i knew <laughs> about music in general and i'm i'm almost embarrassed to say this but uh, but I, but when i was creating the beat buddy i actually did not know even super basic stuff like like how time signatures worked um i remember i was trying to play uh i was trying to play uh, louis armstrong's it, what a wonderful world and i tried to play it on like a basic 44 beat and it just wasn't working and so i asked uh, my friend who's a drummer, you know, like uh, he who also made the beats for the beat buddy. I'm like, why isn't this working? And he's like, that song is in six, eight. So of course it's not going to work. You're, you're, you know, it's not going to end on the right, uh, in the right place. And so I just switched it to six, eight. And then I realized, oh yeah, then it works perfectly. And that's what gave me the idea. Uh, if you, when you're playing the beat buddy, you see the, the measure um, the measure marker, um, uh, we call it the visual metronome, uh, going across the screen as the beat plays, you have that bar that moves with the beat according to the time signature on the screen. And that allows you to time your music 
uh, to the measure, which makes it way, way easier, especially like when you're doing a fill, you know, when that fill is going to end, you know, when the transition is going to end. And so that, that, uh, really made all the difference and gave that visual uh, feedback of how time signatures work and how the beat works, how the rhythm works. Uh, and it just made it um, uh, much more intuitive for me. So I got much better at rhythm. As you said in in the beginning that you were, you were uh, getting much better at rhythm. It's true. When you play to the beat buddy, you get way better at rhythm. And it's the same reason why a, a um, music teacher will tell you to play to a metronome, right? Because a uh, music teacher says you have to play to a metronome in order to get your timing right, because when the natural human tendency is to slow down on the hard parts and speed up on the on the easy parts, and then when you try and go play with other musicians, you're going to be doing that naturally, the speed up and the slow down, but they aren't, and then you're going to go out of sync and it's going to sound terrible. So that's why music teachers tell you practice to a metronome, but everyone hates practicing to the metronome because it's super boring and monotonous and sounds terrible. So when you actually practice to a live drum beat, it's, it's a whole new thing. You get not only the regular timing of it and you learn how to play in time, but you get that nuance rather than just the quarter notes being played. You get the nuance of the actual flow of the beat and you could you could move your music with the flow of the beat and the style that the beat is playing. So it's it's uh, it's an incredible tool that I think most people who just play on their own without other musicians or without accompaniment uh, don't realize what they're missing. I know that was the case with me. I didn't realize what I was missing until I started playing with the beat button. Yeah, yeah, it filled a void that you didn't even know you had really. Exactly. Jason, has that been your experience too as you've been using the beat buddy over the years? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that um, getting a hand drum and learning a couple things, which I, actually I'd like to demonstrate what Mike Longer mm -hmm. showed to tribute to him. He was actually a, a wonderful teacher. He taught thousands of people, uh, but he, he passed unfortunately during COVID. Uh, but mm -hmm. he, he taught me something really important, and 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 David brought up the six eight time. So he he showed how to play a six eight field in a four four beat. So oh, uh, wow. we all know when we're playing four four, we're going one two three four, and it sounds like drums like boom mm -hmm. to cat, boom to cat. But he said. Let's solo and think of a solo with a 6-8 feel. So I'm going to show that to you real quick as part of our meditation part today. Um, and so um, so he would say, tap 6 on your on your legs. So I'm, you can kind of see my legs here, but I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But I'm going to tap 4 with my foot while I'm, while I'm playing 6. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 with my foot. And then I'm going to say 3. So I'm going to be doing six, four, and three together, okay? So this is different for us because we can do melodic meditation, so everyone can practice this at home. So you can hear me do six, four, and three. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. So if you have that at Very your table cool. when you're, when you're <laughs> playing music, <laughs> And then you link that up with the beat buddy. That's where I started making my breakthroughs because I can oh, see. Oh, very the interesting. Digital, yeah, I could see exactly what Dave was saying. You were saying about the digital metronome was going by, but I could mm -hmm. think four, but I could also see three in my head. Right. And um, and it really opened up all kinds of world. Mike plus beat buddy was like this synergy. And then uh, just a quick shout out to the Barry Harris and Chris Park. That methodology for me really brought everything together. So it's a really cool time to be alive for technology and traditional music pedagogy kind of coming together to make us better musicians yeah that's very cool man that that looked like it took some uh some practice to get all that down <laughs> uh, I, I took my first lesson in 2006 so it took a long long yeah time. it's very natural to me now but i remember practicing at home going darn it do it again one two three yeah. four wait which one was four so um now yeah. it's in my hands and i'll show you when i demonstrate the beat buddy now it's in my hand um it's very strange through that i've always wanted to play jazz but i knew i didn't have the feel of it so mm -hmm. people keep saying it's a feel and you got to dig into it and i was like that's just jazz talk i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> when, mike, when mike said no it's six eight but then translated into four four actually let, let me demonstrate that real quick i'll turn on my amp um and so 
Um, this is this is what I was doing on the guitar with the six six feel. I'm gonna wait for the amp to come on. Here it is. So I'm going one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six. Okay, or I'm playing a beat like one two three four five six one two three four five six. But no one plays music like that. You wouldn't have an audience. Right. Like this. But if you take that six eight feel and then without thinking about it, switch it to four, it sounds like this. You go from six one two three four five six one two three four five six. If I go one two three four. Nice. So that, that conversion with your beat buddy in the visual and then Mike saying, okay, we'll stay in the visual four, but put the six feel on top of it. Mm -hmm. That's when I started having my breakthrough. So that I, 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 I give a big tip my hat to you, David, for your invention. It's really helped me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, I never even uh, considered using it in that way. So I tip my hat to you back. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is where the, the giant creativity piece comes in, right? Is because all y'all musicians and businessmen and whomever else are using this piece in a different way that perhaps the other person hasn't thought of, but it just adds to all the benefits that it creates. And then everybody gets to enjoy all of the things. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's like I a agree. big old collaboration. Exactly. That's uh, I think nobody uh, knows how um, how uh, uh, the things that they do will will be used out in the wild because you can't I mean, no one person knows everything. So it's always super interesting to see how, uh, you know, our products are used in unexpected ways. And one thing that another unexpected way that people have been using the Beat Buddy is I've seen drummers use it. So we we have this. Um, uh, I remember when we first launched the Beat Buddy, we got a bunch of hate from drummers online because they thought we were trying to replace them. Oh. And <laughs> and I said, look, if a machine can replace you, yeah. then then maybe you should practice a little more. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, you know, I don't think that this is not really uh, it, it, this is not a replacement for a human. It's just a replace. It's it's a good stand-in when a human is unavailable, right? Um, so, but uh, but then when we actually got on the market, we started seeing drummers post all these videos of them drumming along to the Beat Buddy, and you could change the drum set on the Beat Buddy. So, you, so they were doing, uh, they were changing the the drum set to be like hand percussion. So, you know, usually you can you'd have like a hand percussionist, to, you know, to play along with, but then they can control the beat themselves, so they can do both the percussion and the drum set as well. And you could also, if you have a, a electronic drum set you could put the MIDI note output from the electronic drum set into the Beat Buddy and trigger the sounds in the Beat Buddy. So you can play, you could use the Beat Buddy as what they call a drum brain and get all these different sounds out of your drum set. So that's another another very interesting use that people have, have uh, used for it. Things that we didn't completely did not envision in the first place at all. Right. It's amazing when it's sort of domino effects like that and people are getting yeah. more out of it than than y'all could have even thought of. Um exactly. Jason and I were were happily reminiscing about cowbell <laughs> before yeah. we started this session. Because <laughs> we need more cowbell, obviously, in our everyone lives. everyone's needs more cowbell, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's so funny because uh so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little uh, a little uh, spoiler. Um, or preview, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so the, every every April first, we try to, you know, like most people, most companies do, we try to do like a little April Fool's joke. Okay. And this year, we are making a drum set uh, completely out of cowbells. So oh, yes. so so every drum <laughs> every drum component is going to be like a different type of cowbell, and and then we're going to have like a little jam. And so you say, is you want more cowbell? There's more cow <laughs> as much cowbell as you this, can handle. This is the I want like Kate Abalafia that we talked about this before Please. the interview started, and you really yeah. are doing something for April first. That is God's will, <laughs> synergy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I feel like we need to tag like Lauren Michaels and SNL when you do that, and then you'll like end up going on their show for a sketch. Would be <laughs> that would be that would, that would be amazing. <laughs> I, I've been working on my on my Christopher Walken impression. I got nice. the Christopher Walken wig and the glasses. Yes, you gotta yeah. do it. It would That's be perfect. Perfect. great if you yeah. could do that. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a fun. fever, and the oh, only really prescription. Good is more cowbell. Oh my oh, that's God, really good. that's really good. <laughs> oh, you got to do it. Wow, that was good. Yeah, yes, thank you. <laughs> you need to tweet at them. That'll be yeah, hilarious yeah. if y'all connect. That is super yeah, fun. Sure. We do have cowbell for today because um, uh, Shoshana, and let me know if you want to ask another question. I was going to show him the CCR. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. We can, you can do that and then we'll hit back with some other stuff. 
Okay, let, let me do that real quickly. Yeah. Um, so David, this is for you. This is um, one of the things I wanted to say about Beat Buddy that I've, I've seen to me is new because I've been checking mm -hmm. out a lot more is in the system, you can get classic bands and their drum beats from each classic album. Yes. So I've picked up ACDC, Stevie Ray. Uh, I'm going to play CCR, uh, mm -hmm. Born in the Body, which has Cowbell in it. Nice. <laughs> and I Gotta just, have like, the everybody who's a musician, for me, I'm not part of the Singular Sound Company, but you got to get this pedal. You gotta <laughs> Thank get, you. Yeah, you got to get the backing tracks. I'm having so much fun. So I'm going to I'm gonna actually show you the setup here with this movable mm. camera. Sure. Um, I'm here with the Beat Buddy. There we go. There's the Beat Buddy. This is the Ditto Looper. I would prefer Arrows, but uh, Ditto Looper is working good, but I, I believe Arrows is going to be my next purchase. That's the Singular Sound Looper, but this Ditto, Ditto uh, 4 is pretty good. Uh, but it is, as Dave said, it doesn't have a screen, and it, it can do but so much just internally. Um, you you I, also need that other thing he had that winds up all the yeah. cords. <laughs> yeah, you obviously. definitely need it. You, you need the cable for sure. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely do. Look at this mess. Yeah, so, exactly, uh, exactly. <laughs> So, um, so I've got a set over here to Born on the Bayou, and then I'm going to put through here, I've got the bass, I'm sorry, I've got the bass to play the bass line, I've got the guitar to play the guitar, and then of course I'll do the uh, Abalafia permutations on top. So uh, let me start this thing off and make sure it's working, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to... I'm going to go to B4, which has the cowbell. Oh wait, I stopped it. So if you hit it twice, you stop it. If you hold it down, you transition, you transition to the next piece. So that's transition two. This is three coming up. Okay, now here comes four, which is my favorite one. I don't know if you hear the cowbell, but there it is. Amazing, okay? So my bass is on. And then I'm gonna loop in this bass line. So I'm gonna go. All right, hold on one second. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna reset that. Here we go. Now the looper is going to keep it going. Now I'm going to switch over, switch over to guitar. This is a little magic trick. Hold on one second. That's I have too many wires. All right, and then here's the classic line. the Abalafia permutations. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so, but um, it took both of y'all coming together, right? It's like this <laughs> fantastic idea here from David with Jason together, and it makes like incredible genius music. It's what music making's all about. That's right. Yeah, and, and it's also part of the Abulafia concept to really just branch yeah. out and to see things in different perspectives and see things in different ways and then just challenge your own thinking and, and mm -hmm. just break free from what we did the day before. So, you know, if I listen to myself from a year ago, and then with these other breakthroughs I made this year, I'm like, oh, man, I don't even recognize what was last year. And it's and it's also great to say, well, what would it be like to talk to the inventor of the machine and, and get his opinion and thoughts on this? So as a musician, I've already just grown a thousand times just by the interaction and interview. So we're really hoping that. Thank you. Yeah. Overall, when, when people learn about David and his work and think, oh, there's a product here. Well, now, now they're going to hear from this interview the whole story and the creativity yeah. and actually and the risk. The risk that mm -hmm. was taken, putting every penny out there to do it. And so I hope people celebrate yeah. entrepreneurs more and yeah. people who make a business and make a profit and celebrate when you do something of value, you get value back. And uh, some, uh, you know, just for me in Beta Abalafia in today's world is appreciate those people who take a risk and branch out from your way of thinking and look at a different way of thinking. Don't get so stuck in these boxes everybody's in. And I think music and technology and music inventors uh, can really bring us there. So I've talked enough. Let me turn it back to you, Shoshana. 
<laughs> no, 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 that's okay. I want to talk a little bit about, we've got a few more minutes left here before we wrap up, but I wanted to, Jason, you and I have talked a lot about on our other shows, spirituality and how that works with universalism. And that's why ULR and Beit Alafia, Beit Abu Lafia are so popular is because we share the information, the people take what they want from it, and then they manifest that into how they can implement it into their lives, right? So David, I'm wondering if if any sort of spiritualism or um, sort of bigger picture played a part into any of your music history, any of your invention history. We talk a lot about Jason's band, Nachshon Leaps, has all these diverse people in it. And mm -hmm. we, we were inclusive. We want to bring everybody's ideas into all of the things because that's what really makes everything shine. Do mm -hmm. you have any perspective from that, from sort of like a, you know, we've got one God, perhaps one human family type of idea that that informs some of your creativity? Well, I think where creativity and spirituality overlap is uh, is the it's the practice of making of of keeping yourself open to the universe. So, uh, you know, spirituality to me is is the is the uh, removing of your own personal ego and preconceptions and opening yourself up to experiences in the universe and, yeah. uh, and, you know, and being and making and keeping yourself humble, you know, that you don't know everything and that you haven't experienced everything. And there's so much more out there that, that you could know and experience and, and appreciate. Um, and I think that's, for me, that's a huge element of my spirituality. And it has a, a very large overlap with creativity as well, because you can't, come up with new ideas or or uh think of new ways of doing things if you're stuck in your old ways of doing things and if you're closed off to new possibilities so to me um it's not the exact same thing but there is a huge element of spirituality in creativity as well as a huge element of creativity in spirituality and so uh i like to I, i'm a two birds with one stone kind of guy and so I like having as much overlap as possible and to, to bring both elements into each aspect of my life. Right. Jason, that sounds pretty good, right? I mean, when uh, you're open, that you welcome the things to come in. That would be, that's a hard uh, statement to follow up on. <laughs> <laughs> Tag, you're it. <laughs> I'll just add from the perspective of what I've discovered with Abu Lafi is I've always been very interested in, in Judaism and Torah but um, I felt that more that the path was laid out for me that's mm -hmm. been walked rather than the tools being given. And so I'm hoping mm -hmm. that the effect of working with David and, and Shoshani leading this and, and other people we partner with, that for a spiritual perspective, Jewish or outside of Judaism, uh, spiritual leaders would say, here are the tools to walk your path. I don't know what path that is, but you'll walk it. And, and I think it'll make the creative spiritual process that much more exciting because uh, there'll be that element of that David correctly highlighted of the unknown. So it'd be really cool if you had a rabbi and you said, Rabbi, you know, how do I reach God? And the rabbi says, I don't know. You know, it'd be really, it'd be a really very profound answer. Now, now again, uh, on the other side that we have a very structured national character of the Jewish people and, and, and Abraham Abelafi himself was very committed to the halakha and Judaism, the structure. But within that, within any structure and the structure of music, there's got to be that freedom to explore. So. I think that's why music is such an interesting uh, model for spirituality because there is a four four beat and a six eight beat. You can't get around mm -hmm. that. But inside right. of it, you can find accents and beats to make your own signature. So yeah. I'd like that for spirituality. I don't want it to be totally open like everyone does whatever they want, but I don't want it to be this is the rules and that's it, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, so this has been just a, such a cool um, just um, experience. And I guess my question for David is, you know, in terms of like locking into the beat buddy or like if you think of meditation, is that to you? I mean, to me, that's my meditation. I turn the beat mm -hmm. buddy on. I get into the permutations. But how do you how do you relate to it sort of on your daily life, your own invention? Uh, yeah, music for me is probably the, the most um, the most meditation. I, I would say the, the most meditative state I am in on a regular basis. I think I think everyone has the experience that uh, music can take you places where you've never been before and make you feel things that you've never felt, and um, it's it's a incredible tool that can be everything from just kind of like light background music to uh, to uh, 
uh, make whatever you're doing slightly better to something that completely takes over your consciousness and takes you to a spiritual and mental plane that you've never been to. So I think that the um, the flexibility and uh, the um, capability of music to to relate to us on all these different levels of our consciousness is what makes it so special. And it really is just like most things in life, it's what you make of it. I mean, you could you could scratch just the surface and just have a very uh, shallow appreciation of something, or you can go super deep and have it be life changing. And it's really up to you um, of what you make out of it. And and that's I think the beautiful thing about it is that it relates individually to each person, and each person can make of it what benefits them in that time. Yeah, agreed. I, that's the huge message that we always end up without even trying to take away from each of these sessions that we do is people want to know, okay, well, I'm listening to David and this is cool, but what? how can I implement this and, and make it relatable to my life? Mm -hmm. And that's what it is, is that you can make it whatever you want. So we're going to give right. you some thoughts and ideas and then you take it and you make that into what you want it to be that's going to serve your highest and best purpose. Exactly. So I think um, us concluding there kind of like sums it all up. That is, that's literally what we what we share with all of our viewers as the main takeaway, just to make it your own, is that you've provided the ideas and the thoughts and the products, and then they're going to bring it into their lives however they see fit. And as great. they should. Yeah, yes. and it'll elevate yes. everybody in their own individual way. Exactly. Like one practical takeaway is uh, kids getting guitars. I hope they keep buying guitars and taking lessons. But I, I think when people go out to get a $150 guitar, they should look to get a beat buddy pretty quickly. I think that really should be, in my opinion, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I will say for the beginners, just to just to put it out there, as as you said, uh, Jason, you uh, the first Beat Buddy you had was a Beat Buddy Mini. And that's a, a, a little more than half the price of the regular Beat Buddy. So someone who's just starting out and just spending one hundred and fifty dollars on a guitar, a Beat Buddy Mini is also one hundred and fifty dollars. So I'm not going to say that's a small investment for a beginner, but I will say it's definitely a worthwhile investment because it will just improve your uh, your rhythmic capabilities at a much, much faster rate uh, than just playing by yourself or even playing with a metronome because you get the the uh, the feel of the beat that you're playing along with. And you're much more likely to play to the beat buddy than to a metronome because the beat buddy is just so much more fun. You know, when you tap that pedal and you get a drum fill, it's just super cool. It's just like, you're like, oh yeah, you know, it's like me kicking my drummer and he does what I want, you know? <laughs> and so so it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun and because it's Fun, it means you're going to play along with it much more often than you would play along to your metronome. And then you're going to get much better, much faster at, and much tighter rhythm, <clears throat> which will allow you to play with other musicians at a much sooner time. And playing with other people is really one of the great joys of music, but you do need to have solid rhythmic skills in order to do that. And the Beat Buddy will help you get there. And so I, I definitely agree that someone who's just starting out, maybe don't spend the, about the $400 that it takes to get a regular Beat Buddy, you know, once you're a little better and maybe when you're doing some solo shows or if you really just want to splurge on yourself, it's worth it. Uh, it does have better sound quality. It's more flexible. You could add your own beats and your own songs. You can download the stuff from the internet like Jason did and put famous songs in there. Uh, you can't do that on the Beat Buddy Mini, but the Beat Buddy Mini will give you um, 20 different genres of music, 10 songs in each one. And so it's more than enough than for someone just starting out and it's less than half the price. So I, I would recommend that for someone just starting out. Excellent advice. Yeah. This is why I love doing these on a Sunday is because this starts our week off on such an awesome, positive yeah. trajectory. So David, thank you for taking the time to tell us all of the things. We are super <laughs> My pleasure. Grateful. This was so interesting and, and we appreciate that you've shared so many details with us. Um, My pleasure. Was, yeah, I think our, our viewers are going to find this fantastic and it'll just elevate all of their things if they join in. Yeah, Jason? Yeah, David, thank you for joining. It's been it's been incredible discussion. You know, for every one of these sessions, we do a little pre-call and just let the guests know what the format's like, but we don't really know what's going to be said. And so right. I learned a tremendous amount. Um, I really gained some great insight into your invention process. What I find just mm -hmm. so unique, I, just to invent something and have a physical product. Um, I also want to mention um, this is sponsored by the Bridge Institute and uh, in partnership with Six Million Voices with Rabbi Michal Bayo. 
of East Valley JCC and um, a group that we're partnering with the Pro Human Foundation uh, on this call, Lori Warren. I see you there, so thank you, Lori, for joining. We'll be partnering with the Pro Human Foundation. We really want to get this message of universalism out, of thinking about things differently from different perspectives, and all of us, including myself and everybody, getting out of just looking at the world through one lens and being determined that one lens has to be the only way that the only path you can go down is really hurting us as a society and we can do much better i know we can do a lot better so through Agreed. music and technology and collaboration and um and american know-how and an inventive spirit i think we can get to the next level so shoshana i want to make sure i say a deep deep profound thank you for hosting and guiding these as you always have done for all of these uh, great interviews uh, we're so enriched by you uh joining and 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 directing our conversations thank you and thank you david packhouse again who's the uh owner, a CEO of Singular Sound with the Beat Buddy and Eris Looper and the... Cably. Cably. Cably, thank you. Can you show that to us again on the screen? There, you need a few of these. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. And there that's just go. only he's like just, one section of just, his instruments. Like he's got exactly. a whole bunch of others. Uh, there you go. That's how quickly you put it away. Genius. <laughs> And, and the good thing about it is if you have a long cable like you do, but you're only like a foot or two away from your equipment, you, you could just take out a little bit and yeah. then you just put it on the floor and everything is nice and neat. Love it. Yeah. That's great. Great invention. Good stuff. Thank you. Shoshana, would you like to close us out? Yeah, no, just thanks everybody for joining. David, again, thanks to you for sharing. We are My grateful. Pleasure. This is the first of an interview of this kind. So we're so happy that you joined us. Jason, thank you. ULR, Beta Balafia, JCC, all of it. Prohuman, thank you for everybody being here. And, and here's to everybody having a wonderful, peaceful week. Yes, and thank you, uh, Shoshana. Thank you, Yahoo and Adupa. I just want to acknowledge those two great guys for coming. Everyone have a great week, and we'll see you on the next show.